Welcome to part two of this tutorial on how to set up recording using a microphone. So we ended the last video by creating an audio track, which I've got here. And just to let you know quickly, if you ever wanted to get back to the preferences window, the way you access it is by doing that. And there it is, in case you ever want to go back to it. So there should be a signal being picked up. So if I just unmute this, the signal is being picked up there. So if you see the signal bouncing like that, you know it's being picked up. Now you might be thinking, well, I can see that it's picking up a signal, but I'm not hearing anything. If you click this eye here, which is uh, input monitoring, then you should be able to hear what's being picked up. If you are using a condenser microphone, make sure you switched on phantom power. Otherwise, you'll have trouble picking up a signal. Um, there might be a 48 volt switch or button on your audio interface that turns that on. Now, what you need to do now is set the gain. So you don't want it too low, but you especially don't want it too high. So to configure that, you just need to do a quick sound check of what it is that you want to record. Now, I'm going to do just a very quick voiceover sound check, and you'll see first how the gain will be too low. And then what I'll do is I'll crank it up so it's too high just to show you what happens. And then after that, I'll find a suitable level for it. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Now, if you were paying attention to the sound meter, you would have seen that the signal was pretty low at first, so I needed to increase the gain. But then I took it to the other extreme, I took it too high, where it was so high that it was in the red and it started clipping. Now, I'm going to talk to you more about gain in a few moments, um, but I'll just let you know um, the last thing that you would need to do um, to end up doing a recording. So the last thing you want to do is arm the track for recording. So it's ready to record over this particular track. So for that, you need to click on this R, where it says Record Enable. And then after that, you can click Record. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And there you have it. So if you take that back, you can listen back to it. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, and there we have it. There's your recording. Um, so I'm going to spend a bit of time talking to you about the importance of setting your gain correctly. Now, if you remember, when I was setting the gain before, there was a moment where I took it too high, so I cranked it up too much. Now, if your recording is clipping and it's in the red because the gain was set too high, it's going to sound distorted, it's going to sound bad, and it's almost impossible to completely fix. Um, out of the two extremes, having it too low is not as bad as having it too high, because there are other ways to increase the gain to a suitable level during editing. But what you really want to go for is this nice sort of sweet spot where it's bouncing around, um, say uh, around this sort of area on the meter. And always leave yourself a healthy amount of headroom. So if you're feeling like you might be going a little bit high, just reduce it. It's better to be on the safe side and give yourself that little bit more headroom to play with. So even if it might seem a little low, you can always give it a little extra kick through mixing and editing. So yeah, essentially just give yourself a healthy amount of signal, but always make sure, and more importantly, to leave yourself a healthy amount of headroom at the top. And just finally, when you do your sound check or your gain check, make sure that you sing or play the same way you intend to record it, paying particular attention to the loudest parts of the recording. There's no point in having someone do a quiet and timid sound check um, because you won't get a true indication of the level you should be setting the gain at. So you might end up having a situation where you think you've set the gain for a singer, but then when they start recording a vocal that's much louder than the initial sound check was, they might start clipping and then you're going to have to reduce the gain and probably get another take with the new gain level that you've set. So yeah, just sound check in the same manner that you're going to record at. So you won't have to mess around with the gain when you've started recording. Also, make sure the gain levels are consistent. Because if you record a take,
but during that take you're messing around with the game, that's going to reflect in the recording and you might end up having unwanted fluctuations in the volume of that recording. And that's a massive headache to mix with. Um, not impossible to fix, but it's a big headache because you'll probably have to identify and mirror the changes in get in gain with automation. And it's, it's just an unnecessary problem that you'll be giving yourself. So essentially, just sound check properly first time round, and you shouldn't run into problems.